Welcome to cooking. Today we are making a comfort dish, a wintertime comfort meal called baked cabbage roll skillet. So this is kind of the lazy way to make cabbage rolls, much more efficient way, and um, I find it tastes just the same. So what do we always do after washing our hands? We read through our ingredients, make sure we have everything, and then read through the directions to make sure we understand what we're doing. So we've got some oil, some pepper. We've already got it chopped up. It calls for one pepper. We did half of two different colors just for the prettiness of it. You can use whatever you want, whatever you've got. And an onion, um, a pound of ground pork or beef, whichever one you have, two cloves of garlic, um, a 14 ounce can of tomato sauce. 14 ounces is almost two cups, which is almost 500 mils. It's not exact with this recipe, it's not baking. So you can use almost two cups, a little bit less if you want, a little bit more. The exact number is 437 mils if you're very interested. About a half a cup of water, a teaspoon of spices, paprika, chili powder, and cumin. And then we're gonna add in a cup of quick, quick cooked brown rice. Um, you can all, if you already have some brown rice cooked, then you can add that cooked just a little bit later and then you'll have to decrease the amount of water just because it won't absorb the same amount of water. And then we're gonna add two cups chopped cabbage, any color at all. And you're gonna garnish with some, with some sour cream if you'd like. All right, directions, how are we doing this? So in a deep frying pan, so, or a pot, anything with higher sides because it's gonna fill up and we don't wanna have to worry about things falling out. So if you have a pot, that might be better. Today we're just gonna use a deep skillet there, um, which I'll just take off the element for a minute. Um, and after that, we're going to add our onions and our pepper with our oil and cook that for about four minutes until it gets a little bit soft. And then we're gonna add in our meat and our garlic. Um, we're gonna stir that for about five more minutes and then we're gonna stir in our tomato sauce, our water, our rice, and our spices and bring that to a boil. Once it's boiling, we're gonna add in our cabbage and then we're gonna cover that because we want the rice to cook and absorb the water for another 15 minutes and we're done. Perfect, so I just want to show you how to chop a cabbage up because it can be difficult. Um, if you don't wanna chop up a cabbage, get a bag of coleslaw, as simple as that. Then you'll have a good mixture of cabbage colors in there already. So all we need is two cups. So it's actually quite surprising how little of a slice off the cabbage gives you two cups. Um, so when you get a cabbage, of course, wash it up because everything in the grocery store, we don't know how many hands it's touched, so wash it up. If you've got any leaves on the outside that look battered, this one looks pretty good, um, but if they look battered, um, just take it off and throw it out. This one's got some dark spots on it. We can totally eat that, um, but I will just take that off to show you. So I'm thinking that two cups, remember, flat hand on top of a big knife, all the way down because if you have your fingers in there and the knife goes down faster you might um, be loss of something so you just chop something off like this put this over here and remember when we're cutting around the cabbage this is the stem that is not edible so um, you'll see it as we get closer to the root that um, you'll see the different texture of it we don't want to chop it up into the cabbage because it's not going to break down we only want these leaves all right and the stem goes only about an inch inch and a half into the bulb so you, it's not like um, something else that goes all the way through you only have to just kind of throw out the bottom little part so again we want things chopped up as similar in size as possible so that it all cooks at the same time so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of um, shred it almost chop it into small slices keeping your fingers back chopping slowly it's a hard vegetable and then what I typically do is just turn my cutting board because then we're gonna just chop it the same pattern, the same thickness along the other way, and that's going to leave us with little cubes. 
Now remember, starting with a sharp knife is the biggest trick in cooking. If you have a dull knife, the dull knife's gonna slip all over. It's gonna make cutting very difficult and it's going to make your fingers very scared of a possible um, accident. All right, so there you are. You can see that little bit of a slice that we cut off has made a lot of cabbage pieces because when cabbage grows, it grows very dense. So when we cut it and it all separates, that's probably at least two cups. We've already got two cups here and I'm thinking that looks about the same. So it's very surprising. So now you have all of this cabbage to do anything else that you want with. You can um, dice it up and actually freeze it if you'd like in little baggies. And I would probably make it like two cups or something and label it. And then you can pull it out and throw it into soups throughout the winter. You can throw it into stews. Um, you could just shred that on a cheese grater and then just make um, coleslaw with it, anything you want. But now you've got the rest of your cabbage. All right, so we're gonna go over to the oven. We're gonna put our oil in, put our onions and peppers, and um, we're gonna cook that up. All right, we're at our stove top. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of grapeseed oil, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And remember, when it heats up, it gets very thin, so you really don't need much at all. So I had my element preheated, so this pan is gonna be nice and hot when we throw these vegetables in, which is the sound we love, isn't it? That's the benefit of a cutting board that is flexible. It's nice to be able to just slide them in. So if you didn't want to cook these vegetables first and you just wanted to throw everything into a slow cooker, leave the house if you're going to go grocery shopping, that is no problem at all. You can totally do that. However, doing this job of cooking the vegetables with the onions first is really going to increase your flavor. Um, onions and peppers uh, and carrots, they have some natural sugar in them. So as the heat gets through those vegetables, um, they start to cook fully into the center and the natural sugar is released and then it starts to caramelize. You'll see it's starting to change into a brown flavor as time goes on four, five, six minutes at a medium to high heat. And um, you'll find it starts to smell really good. Um, it's gonna be a different color. It's going to be a lot softer. The goal with uh, your, your onions is to get them so that they're translucent so you can see through them. So meet me back here in about four or five minutes and we're gonna finish cooking. Hi, right, welcome back. So I do have to say, this cooked down for a good six or seven minutes. So don't rush it. You don't wanna burn it before it's cooked. But take a peek at that beauty right there. We've got some lovely caramelized onions. They were see-through and now they're nicely caramelized. That um, brown pepper or chocolate pepper is now uh, similar looking to the onions and the yellow pepper is looking great. So we've got two cloves of garlic we're going to add. Now I don't add the garlic beforehand because it's got a lot of sticky properties to it and I find that it sticks and then the onion doesn't cook. So I like to add it after the onion is fully cooked. I'm not sure if um, you guys have found that out before. Now I did in the middle of cooking that onion, turn it down to medium temperature. You'll have to assess um, your stove top cooking. You might need to do that as well. So we're gonna cook the garlic and we're gonna add our meat here. So to not have to clean and disinfect surfaces, I don't like to touch meat. So all I like to do is to open it up, get it out somehow without getting that paper out which sometimes is very difficult, but today we had success. And then you just stick that in a sink full of water with soap um, or a dishwasher. So, the knife, the knife. The knife correct. <laughs> <laughs> Not the packaging, good call. So now we're just gonna spend four or five minutes cooking this beef or this pork. This is pork today. You'll know when it's cooked, when that pink has turned to white. So we'll meet you back here in four or five all minutes. All right, we're back. Look at that pork all cooked up. It changed completely from pink 
to nice and brown all the way through. You try to break apart those big clumps. It's just not nice when you're eating it to get a great big clump of meat in there. You want to get a little bit of everything. Okay, so our next step is to stir in the tomato sauce, the water, the rice, and your spices and bring it to a boil. So I'm going to add the rice first. And then we'll add in our tomato sauce. Now this was a minute brown rice, a pre-cooked, and then they dehydrate it. So of course we know that the longer we cook a food, um, white versus brown, the healthier it is. So that minute right rice isn't as healthy as a brown long grain rice. We know that for sure, but it is better to do brown versus white. All right, so we're gonna add in our tomato sauce. And then you're gonna have to turn your temperature up. Just because that's gonna have to come to a boil. And adding all that liquid in is gonna dry that right out, or sorry, not dry it, it's going to cool it right down. Now I always tell people to scrape the sides of your bowl really well because you work so hard to get those little pieces chopped up and cooked. You don't want to waste anything on the side of your, your pot there, your Dutch oven. Excellent. So that's looking really great, coming together nicely. Our last step is those spices. So I put in here, we have chili powder and cumin, a teaspoon each. I just wanted to remind you how to measure out um, ingredients such as spices. So again, we get a great big mounding heap. And then we have a flat surface such as a knife. And we just scrape it off like that. And you've got a nice flat teaspoon. Now this is paprika. Paprika is um, really not a, a spice that adds much flavor. It just adds a lot of color. So it's going to deepen that orange of the tomato sauce so that it's going to be a lot darker as it cooks. It's the chili powder and the cumin that really adds a lot of the spices. And feel free to add what you'd like. Another recipe had dill in there. So if you're a big dill fan, then feel free to add that if you... Uh, omit the meat and you're just adding maybe some lentils you know that's our favorite Rebecca's number one then you can add your favorite spices that go along with whatever meat you're adding all right so that's got to come to a boil then we got to cook for 15 minutes um, actually not where it's gonna come to a boil we're gonna add the cabbage and then it's gonna cook for 15 minutes I am thinking we're gonna have to add a little bit more water to that just so that it doesn't burn um, during that 15 minutes, you'll likely have to check on it. So I guess that's, you can see those bubbles around the outside and in the middle, with a solid like this, it's not like a, a liquid soup where the, the, the bubbles are coming to the top of the liquid and popping. But um, So you can see the bubbles all the way through. So I guess that is a boil. Let's add our cabbage. Having everything pre-chopped like this makes it so much easier. You can, if you're not good at standing in the kitchen for long, you can pre-chop all of those things the day before. And then the day that you're gonna cook, you're just gonna throw them all together. It's nice and quick and easy. And again, at any stage here, if you wanted to cook those vegetables in the beginning and then you didn't want to sit around and just wait for this to cook down, you could transfer this to a slow cooker or you could have it in a pot that goes in the oven. Um, it just will take a lot longer than 15 minutes, probably more like an hour, hour and 20 for that to um, cook down on the cabbage. So I am going to add about another half of a cup, three quarters of a cup of water and um, and we'll add that in there and then we will put that lid on because you don't want the water to just evaporate out with the boil. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect, so three quarters of a cup of water. Now, if we added a lot more water than we, um, than we want and in the end it's too watery, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna take the lid off and then we're just gonna let that boil and allow that water to evaporate and that's what's gonna thicken it. 
But there you go, that looks a lot better now. It looks a lot um, more moist to be able to cook down that cabbage. So we're gonna put the lid on, we're gonna set our timer for 15 minutes, but I do want you to check yours every five or six minutes just to make sure that nothing is sticking, nothing is boiling or burning at the bottom. So I'm gonna turn mine down to a medium, medium low after we got that boiling, then it'll stay that temperature with the lid on and we'll meet you back in 15. All right, we are back. We've got our 15 minutes cooked. Everything looks nice and soft. That cabbage, you can tell it's changed from um, totally hard and white to, you can tell it's a lot more soft, but also um, it's see-through. You can see right through those little cabbage leaves so we know that they are cooked. And there you have it. We are completely done our cabbage roll skillet recipe. You can serve it with some sour cream on it, with a little um, cheese on it, with um, nothing at all. It is fantastic the way it is. If you wanted to make this a meal, you've got your carbohydrate in there, you've got um, your protein from the meat, and you've got some vegetables. So this, in fact, could be your meal. I would probably add on the side maybe a carrot stick or two just to get some um, fresh fruit to get some more fiber. Um, but there you have it folks. Cabbage roll skillet. Thank you Mary Ann and Rebecca for your fine work.